Richard, I have to say thank you for that reading of that scripture because you really got my attention. I loved it when you said, and if a child, then also hair. What, hair? Suddenly the Bible's talking about something I've been praying for all along. <laughs> hair. Oh, I, air. Okay. I thought, though, it was a good text, though. You had it as one of my favorites right then, there. I appreciate that. You know, it's one of these things when Scripture comes alive and something strikes our attention and we're all of a sudden like, oh, wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, what is the Bible saying for us? What is this ancient text trying to speak to us about? Well, today's text is a very exciting one because it really speaks to something about our lives that we need to acknowledge every single day of the journey. How many of you love game shows? You love those game shows you see on TV? They're lots of fun to watch. And you all know the game show, To Tell the Truth. And you've seen this in the very classic line that they offer, that line that says, will the real John Doe or whoever please stand up? Always asking for the real one. And yet there's that wonderful moment where the fake or the imposter stands and then sits down a little bit and stands up a little bit more. And there's like, who is it? Is it number one? Is it number two? Is it number three? And the, Oh, finally, the real one does stand up all the way. And, you know, it's a beautiful moment when we're suddenly saying, he's the one telling the truth. He's the one speaking his truth. Today's journey is about asking everyone to do just the same. Speak your truth. Speak your truth. And more importantly, stand up. Stand up and declare your truth. Live in that upright position, standing tall, tall and straight and firm in that this is what I know. This is who I am. This is where I come from. This is everything that I know about myself and how I'm called to live and operate within this world. Stand up and to tell the truth. Because for years, people of faith have been living as the imposters. Unfortunately, they have been those who've been clouded over with beliefs that they don't know or speak or testify of the real truth, their real reality of who they are. And consequently, the world is so confused as we find a world of people who convey an imposter, convey that spirituality that says, wait a minute, I don't see you speaking out, living as... Not a slave, but an heir. Not a slave, someone with hair, but no, not a slave, but an heir. I love that. Not a slave. Wow. I love this proclamation in our world because so many in our world from time to time have living outside of the truth of who they are. And that truth is to live your most high, to live your highest and best every single day. You wake up and know that who you are is the child of God. You're empowered from the get-go. You may not feel like it until you've had that cup of coffee that you're empowered, but let me tell you, you are. That breath that you're taking as you rise up is that empowering breath that says, I know who I am, not a slave, but an heir. For here, this beautiful text describes exactly the challenges we've had. We've been living as a slave, slave to things and thoughts of limitation, doubt and fear. Now, I can talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. And you and I both know, I included, there are these moments when we fall into slavery of the thoughts of limitation. Fear wants to creep in. Limiting thoughts, beliefs, ideas, things that say it's not possible, it's not going to work for us. And but suddenly we entertain those thoughts and before you know it, we become a slave to them. We become a slave. My sister is visiting from Omaha, Nebraska. She's four years older than me, and she's always been my role model. I mean, my sister can do everything. She can cook, she can clean, she can play the violin, she plays the piano, she sings, she's musical, she's, done, she's a CPA, she knows math, and she makes numbers work in magical ways. All the kind of things that I wish I could do. And yet, she said to me yesterday, there are days when it just overwhelms me, and I feel like I can't do this. I'm like, what? What makes you, you can't do this. You're my role model. How can you say this? You know, I said, you know, when I grow up, I want to be that kind of multi-talented person just like you. I want to have all these skills and you seem to be the master of so many. And then you're telling me you can't, or there's days when you feel like you can't. 
And she said, yeah, I just, there are some days when I just feel like it's not possible. It's not going to work for me. I, I don't know if I can go on anymore. I don't know if I can continue. This seems overwhelming. Yes, one of the dilemmas was asking her to travel from Noonan on the Interstate 85 in Atlanta. Having lived in Omaha, Nebraska, she would say, I can't. And I said, oh, come on. I know you can. You get in that car and you drive and it's just a straight shot. Stay on that freeway. I can't. I don't know if I can do this freeway thing. I don't know if I can do this traffic. And I said, I know you can. I know you can. But you see, sometimes we bought into this lifestyle that we have lived as a slave. We've lived in this world where we feel like we are not an heir to the good things of this world. But let me tell you this. Today is your winning day. Today is your day when you've won something greater than the lottery. You've won the truth. You've won the truth. You're an heir. Get ready to inherit. Get ready to inherit. Are you all ready to inherit something fabulous and wonderful? Well, you are. Give yourself a round of applause because today you've just awakened to the wonderful understanding you're an heir. Not a slave, but an heir to all things that are good. All the goodness of God is there for us. And when we wake up to this, we understand this is my truth. God's goodness is there for me. And when I may feel like I can't, or it's not possible, or I'm limited, or I'm fearful, or I'm doubting, I need to reawaken and stand up and say, this is my truth. I'm an heir. I'm an heir. I'm a child of God. And I am an heir to all the goodness that is there for us. It's that moment when we understand that we're called to live from the most high within us. That is the God, the divinity within us. You don't need to look outside. It's already there deep within you. All of your I can ability is already inside you. You need to speak it. You need to claim it. Stand up right now and proclaim it. That's what it's all about. Because to demonstrate this, what we have to do is come into a vibrational match with all that is good in this world. You know, our singers, when they're singing in unison, they come into a vibrational match in unison. That's their tone is matching with someone else's tone. And everything comes into a sense of unity. And that's where we call it unison. And everyone starts singing the same tone. No, it's not singing. That's over here. It's all this. Everyone's coming into a vibrational tone of oneness of unity and how important it is now this truth you know you're an heir it's time for you to come into vibrational unity in matching that that's in your consciousness in your day-to-day -day thinking and the way you live your life align yourself with this because if you're not aligned with the truth well you know what some things just look a little crazy don't they have you ever met those people who proclaim something to be their truth and they live so differently they look like a phony it doesn't look real. It doesn't really match. It's not in alignment. You know, they may say they're this or that, but they live everything contrary to it. Well, we're called to walk in an alignment, a vibrational match with the divinity of God, the very essence of God, to come into the, if God is all good, then I need to be aligned with that all good, and then I live in the all good. And my thinking, my mindset is that I am an heir and I live and walk and breathe and move so differently than I would as I were a slave. You see, in this matching, this unity, unity uh, we really open ourselves to being one, one with this. We have lived too long with a filter that has held us back. Now, I have a wonderful filter that I just put on my drain pipe by my driveway. You know, all the water coming off the driveway, we put a little pipe that runs off down to a drainage culvert to get it away and to kind of, you know, get all the leaves and all the dirt and everything that comes in a rainstorm rushing down and going in the right direction. But in front of that pipe, we just put a little filter to make sure that it doesn't get clogged up. And so what happens is on the outside of that filter screen, there's all kinds of leaves and debris that does pile up as the water moves on through. Sometimes we look at a filter and we say, oh, that's a good thing. But let me tell you this. We have embraced a filter of doubt and fear so long that what we have is clogged up the goodness of God. 
And it's like all these blessings coming up against this filter and they can't get through because you've put a filter over your consciousness of fear and doubt and worry and stress that says, you know, this isn't going to work for me. I can't. It's, I don't know if I can really believe this to be true. I don't know if this is going to work out. And that filter then is holding back. Oh, it's time to clean out that filter because if you pull that filter off, can you imagine the amount of blessings that are ready to flow right to you, that are waiting for you. It is the goodness of God, but we have to come into alignment. We have to come in uh, uh, an agreement with it. We have to come in vibrational frequency levels that match, that says, I live that goodness every single day. Either that or the mindset that you have will keep you from your highest and best. We need to give our thoughts in this direction that says, I'm going to show my thoughts what I, the desire of where to go, where I want to go, what my desire is. I'm going to show my thoughts the way I want to grow, the way I want to develop. I'm going to really speak to my thoughts about the things, get this, I already know. Because let me tell you this, you know a lot. There's a lot within you. It's already there. But you know how when we let fear and stress and worry get in the way, we can't think of a single thing. We can't remember anything. You know, we get frightened, we get scared, we get terrified, and it blocks, it just closes off our process of clarity and thinking. And we can't remember anything. We can't remember, you know, sometimes can't even remember our name. You know, we can forget all the simplest of things. And in this stress and this worry, but I'm going to tell you this, but when you set that mindset in the right way, I am an heir, I am not a slave, I am an heir, I'm the child of God, God has ordained this in such a way that the scripture says, Jesus invites us crying, the spirit is crying out, Abba. Oh, not, not the band. <laughs> Although, you know... Dancing queen works for me. I don't know. There's a lot of things that could work that are spiritual. But crying out, Abba, Father, meaning in this Abba, that intimacy, that childlike intimacy with the divine source. To be so connected and so familiar and so intimate with that divine source that you might have that sense of familiarity in a comfort phrase. Not something that says, oh, excuse me, divine sir, you great person up in the sky in the distance, but having that intimate connection. You, a child that is so intimately connected with a divine source that there's such a level of comfortability that you might use the word Abba almost as if it were saying daddy or divine source in an intimate way, in an intimate connection. In the translation, as it is for us, as we understand it to be, it's this phrase that we might use of a child crying out in a beautiful, intimate way of familiarity. So what happens is that when we set our mind in a certain direction, what happens is what you accept in mind, you're all going to accept in your body. Now think about that for a moment. Because what you think kind of manifests within the physical being. There's a story of a man who worked for the railway. He was cleaning a railway car. It happened to be the freezer car. And he stepped into the railway car and the door slammed and it locked behind him. <gasps> he was devastated. I am locked in the freezer car. I'm going to freeze to death. He began to do everything he could to bop himself up and bundle himself up thinking, I got to keep warm, jumping up and down. I got to stay warm. I got to stay warm. I got to stay warm because I'm going to freeze to death in here. And pounding on the door, screaming, someone let me out. Someone let me out. And there was no answer. And the hours went by. And he said, it's getting colder. It's getting colder. It's getting colder. I, I better curl up in a ball in the corner and try to stay as warm as I can. I'm going to do everything I can to keep from freezing to death. The next morning, someone opened up the door. They found the man dead. They took him to the hospital and did an autopsy. He had all the evidence of having been frozen. His body gave all the signs of a body that had been frozen to death. Strange thing about it is that railroad car wasn't performing properly. The refrigeration wasn't to its proper freezing level, and the man didn't know that. He'd gone in to clean it, but unbeknownst to him, didn't realize this car is not freezing, but his thoughts said it was. Strange that that's what happens within our body and in our life. When you think you're a slave, your thoughts begin to manifest in that way that within the body, everything about you says, 
I'm a slave to this world. I'm a slave to all of its physical elements. I'm a slave to everything that it does and it says. I'm going to be just led around by a chain. I'm going to be held with ball and chain around my ankles. I'm limited in all ways. And you begin to think that. Your body manifests that. And that's the way you are. When we shift, and we make a change in our thinking, we, our mind reflects something totally different our body begins to reflect something totally different in the same context as well Hippocrates said that he would rather know what sort of person has a disease than what sort of disease a person has interesting thought we think I'd rather know what sort of person it is is a person who's living in fear is a person who's living in doubt are you living in limitation what are you struggling with? I want to know what your issue is more than what your dis-ease, disease is. I want to know what your dis-ease is. What's making you uncomfortable? What are you struggling with? What's your fear? Because that's what's manifesting within you. The idea that you are less than, the idea that you were the slave to this world is manifesting something within you. So if we know what your dis-ease is, we can do the work of healing that disease. This is why it's so important that we identify with the part of us, of the spirit that's within us, that says we are perfect and whole. That is right. You are perfect and whole. Turn to someone and say, you are perfect and whole. That's right. I, I th say it again, because some of you are struggling with those words, perfect and whole. You haven't heard them enough. You are perfect and whole. That's right. When's the last time someone said you're perfect? A lot of people say, oh, you look nice, but, uh, you know, there's nice, but, you know, mm, you know, it, that looks okay, but oh, I wouldn't have worn that. But, you know, all right, you know, that's, just, you know, and we struggle with all of this. But to know that you're perfect and whole and that's innately your true self, that's who you need to stand up and proclaim. It's not a sense of ego. It's a sense of true realization. God has made me perfect and whole. And I need to walk and live and be in that kind of consciousness because it's going to reflect in all ways within my life. God is perfect and that image within us that we are created in is perfect. Now we have bought into this language that has led us into slavery that we've heard in religious traditions here of the original sin, that you were born in sin, that you were sinful by nature. Did you know that that teaching, that theory... That idea was not around when Jesus was here. You know, see, in ancient Judaism, they believed in original blessing. You were born in the goodness of God. About the year 325, the theologians getting together began to acknowledge a conservative, fear-based theologies and led Christianity and the biblical interpretation of Scripture down a road of believing in original sin that you're now born and sinful. You're not perfect. You're not whole. You were born sinful and a nature within you that's wrong and evil and sinful by nature. And you know, we have to get rid of some of this. We have to release these kind of things that have held us in slavery because we'll never see ourselves as an heir of all the goodness of God when we constantly embody this idea that somehow we were born sinful in nature. That God created you, yet in your nature was this evilness. Yet God says, I created you in my image, in perfection. And that's a hard thing for us to change. And we need to release that thought. Release that thing that's held us back. Release that filter that's kept us from the goodness of God flowing into our lives. Michelangelo, the great artist. When asked about his concept and his, his idea for the statue of David said, how did, it, you know, how did it come to you? What was it all about? And he said, you know what? I just began chiseling away. And I began to chisel away everything that was not David. And in our life, our work is doing the same. Chiseling away everything that's not the divine creation that you are. Chiseling away and removing Letting go of all those thoughts, ideas, crazy misconceptions that would somehow lead us in some way to think that you are less than and not as good.
And for all those who persevere and come through with this kind of work, there's something amazing that we begin to see and unfold for us because there is this wonderful truth, but if we don't acknowledge it, if we don't chisel it away, if we don't remove that which is not, we don't get to see the true us and stand as who we are. There's a story telling of a struggling artist who was so poor that he couldn't even afford money to purchase a new canvas. He had hoped to create a new artist uh, rendition, something artistic rendition that would be wonderful that hopefully he could sell and have some money to live off of. So poor, all he had was a few pittance and he went to a flea market sale. He found a painting there. It's kind of a crude painting of Napoleon. Oh, we thought, you know, maybe I could take this painting and I could paint over the top of the canvas. Maybe I could do that and maybe I could create something that would be worthy of sale and I would make a living for myself or at least be able to sustain myself. So he purchased the canvas and its beautiful frame and took it home, thinking I'll just try to brush over it. And then as he began to clean the canvas, all of a sudden the paint began to wash off. And underneath there was something else. And he began to wash a little bit more. And what is this? There's something underneath this. And he began to wash even more and even more and even more. And suddenly what he revealed was this wonderful masterpiece by one of the classic artists. It was a gorgeous piece. A beautiful masterpiece was suddenly revealed that when sold, it brought to him a wonderful inheritance, a blessing, financial good. You see, this is the story of our lives. There's a beautiful masterpiece right there, right there, right there. But we've allowed things to cover it over. We've allowed things to kind of cloud over the beauty of that masterpiece. And we bought into the world, words of society and culture, the environment that we live in, and it's become a masterpiece that's covered over. But when we wipe it clean, we see the beauty of God's wonderful creation that's there. There is a masterpiece within you. Today is your day to call it out and to bring it out and let it reveal. So I ask you today to be that one when asked, will the real you please stand up? Because what it's all about is recognizing that every single day I am not a slave that is not the role I live in this world. I am an heir. And it is through God that these things unfold for me. I love it because as we walk into this divine presence and awareness of this presence, as we walk through it in mind and in action and in all ways, it's right there. Walking through something is a beautiful experience. I have a beautiful garden in my backyard. Lots of wonderful flowers have been planted. And when I walk through the beauty... It's transformational. I walk through and I see the roses. I see the flowers that are blooming. I see the different plants. I see the gorgeous ferns. I see all these things there that are there crying out of God's wonderful ability to create and manifest. And when we walk through, when we walk through this divine presence, we know in this consciousness, I'm not a slave, I'm an heir. And I walk through this to experience the beauty, the masterpiece, the wonderful creation of God that I am. It's all things being chiseled away to reveal exactly I am a child of God. Amen. Amen.